Ben's wife keeps peeking at him from around corners and behind furniture, and it's gone from weird to terrifying. Ben and his wife Lynn had been together for six years and married for just 11 months, but their entire history together had been very normal, and he never noticed any weird behaviors or red flags. He can't stress enough how out of character this whole thing was for her. Lynn is very kind, intelligent, and thoughtful. She's always been the no-nonsense type of person. Being childish or trying to scare him is not something she'd normally do. She doesn't even like watching horror movies. When they first started dating, she had agreed to watch The Shining with him because she knew how much he loved horror. She was so scared that she didn't even make it through half of the movie before they had to turn it off. She isn't into anything creepy and has never been into pranks. It's just not her cup of tea and that's fine. But that's what's so strange about all this. It's just so unlike her. What night, God family? If you like this video, do me a solid. Give me a like, subscribe, follow. Let's get them follower counts up. And share, comment, interact with this video. All impressions matter. Thank you guys. Enjoy the video. What's more is as far as he knows, she never has had mental health issues. And as far as he was aware, it doesn't run in her family. He knows some people are able to hide their mental health problems, but in the six years they had been together, he would have seen it by now. Two months ago, Ben was in the kitchen making himself some coffee before work. He was running a bit late that morning and knew he wouldn't be able to make it to Duncan for his usual morning fix. He took a sip of his coffee as he hurried down the hall towards the front door. When he happened to notice something, Lynn was peeking at him from around the corner just ahead. He could only see her eyes and a strand of her long hair hanging against the wall. The rest of her body was concealed behind the corner. He nearly spilled his coffee when he saw her. He did burn the shit out of his lips. Jeez, Lynn, he said, wiping a few drops of coffee from his pants. You scared the shit out of me. She immediately popped out of view like a little kid that had been caught. He heard her scurry off towards the living room, and by the time he got to the front door, she was out of sight. It was really weird and just totally out of character for her. But he also found it kind of funny that she was being more playful and a little less serious. He shouted that he loved her and called her a weirdo. As he shut the door behind him, he could hear her laughing and giggling. Yes, her behavior was a bit odd, but it certainly wasn't something to call a priest over. He forgot about it by lunch, and by the time he got home, she was her normal self. He didn't bring it up, and neither did she. Life went on. The next incident happened about three days later. It was around 2 a.m. Ben had woken up to get a drink. He was standing at the kitchen island, jug of OJ in hand, when he felt a strong feeling that he was being watched. And for whatever reason, he looked down at the floor and saw his wife's smiling face staring back. She was peeking at him from the other side of the island, staring up at him with wide, unblinking eyes and grinning, grinning like the Shishire cat. He screamed. Ah! At the sound of his scream, Lynn scuttled backwards out of view her hands and feet smacking the tile floor as she hurried out of the kitchen on all fours. Ben didn't run after her or even yell at her. He just stood there frozen in shock, wondering what had possessed her to do that. It took him a little longer than he'd like to admit to go back upstairs, but he eventually did. When he got to the bedroom, Lynn was lying on her side asleep, or at least pretending to be. Ben stood there for a while watching her breathe to be sure she was really asleep. He had the feeling she might jump out at him at any moment. But she didn't. He climbed into bed and she didn't even move. Her breathing was so soft and deep, he was starting to wonder if he dreamt the whole thing. The next morning, he waited for her to come down for coffee, and after handing her her mug and kissing her on the cheek, he decided to ask about it. So what was last night about, he asked, keeping his tone light so he didn't offend her or embarrass her. She frowned over her cup of coffee, shaking her head like she had no clue what he was referring to. You were peeking at me again. From over there, he said, pointing to the spot on the floor by the kitchen island. She followed his gaze, and when she looked back at him, she burst out laughing. She laughed so hard that he couldn't help but join her. You creep the hell out of me sometimes, you know that, he said. She giggled and set her cup of coffee on the counter and wrapped her arms around his neck. You creep me out all the time, so I guess we're even. They said their goodbyes and left for work. As he drove, he kept thinking about how creepy it had been seeing her grin at him from behind the island like that. The sounds her hand made on the floor as she crawled away. He told himself she was just trying to be silly, just trying to join him in his love of all things horror. 
It's not like he was afraid of his own wife, but something still didn't sit right with him. He started seeing her peeking at him more and more. Sometimes she'd be peeking out from behind the couch or the living room curtains. Once she even managed to get inside her grandmother's old trunk that sits at the foot of their bed. He may not have known she was there at all, had the trunk's old hinges not given her away. She'd had the lid propped up just enough so that only half of her face peeked through. She'd been grinning like an excited toddler. It was unnerving. He didn't even know what to say to her. All he could do was stare. When he finally found his voice, he asked her why on earth she was doing this. She didn't answer, but she had slowly closed the lid, shutting herself inside. He just walked away, feeling disturbed. He didn't understand why she was doing it, but it clearly made her happy. He just hoped she would tire of the game quickly. Lynn didn't peek at Ben for the next two weeks. He started to think she was done with her weird prank, and he was relieved. They were watching a show on Netflix one night, and he jokingly said that he hadn't seen her peeking at him lately, and that she must have given up on her spy game. She looked up at him with a small smile and said, maybe I've just gotten better at it. He didn't say anything, but he wondered whether or not she was joking. For the next few days, Ben couldn't stop thinking about what she'd said. Was she still peeking at him when he wasn't looking and he just didn't notice? And if so, what the hell was she getting out of all this? He started to feel paranoid, constantly checking whether she was watching from around the corner or behind a door. He was jumpy whenever he was home and she wasn't in full view of him. He felt stupid and a little crazy, but after a few weeks without another incident, he began to relax. He stopped checking behind furniture and walls and told himself it was just a bad memory. Then a few days ago, things got so much worse. Lynn left to go to a friend's and Ben lounged on the couch and played a couple games on his laptop. Around 9 p.m., he hopped in the shower and as he was washing the soap from his hair, he felt that awful feeling again that he was being watched. Slowly, he opened his eyes and almost had a friggin' heart attack. Lynn was peeking from behind the shower curtain. Her head stretched into the shower, leaving just her body outside. Her long, dark hair hung against the curtain, the ends dripping with water. Her mouth hung open in a terrible grin, eyes wide and red, as if she hadn't blinked in quite a while. He screamed and <gasps> jumped back against the wall. Lynn didn't move, nor did her smile waver an inch. Her makeup ran down her cheeks in two black streaks. She looked like Giddu and completely deranged. Ben was terrified. They stood like that for a few moments, neither of them saying a word. Finally, after what felt like forever, she slowly pulled her head back out of the shower and he watched her blurry figure through the curtain as she moved backwards towards the bathroom door. A second later, the bathroom door slammed shut, hard enough to rattle the mirror. He screamed again and jumped out of the shower to lock the door. He stayed in the bathroom for over an hour. Maybe he overreacted, but joke or not, he wasn't gonna put up with this crazy shit anymore. That's what he kept telling himself as he paced in the bathroom, stopping to listen at the door every few minutes. Suddenly, he heard a muffled sound. He pressed his ear against the bathroom door, straining to listen. He couldn't hear anything, but he envisioned Lynn standing on the other side of the door, giggling at her joke. He felt a surge of anger. He was beyond pissed at being made to feel scared inside of his own house and made to hide in the bathroom for an hour. All for what? Some joke? If it was a joke, it was an awful one. What the hell, Lynn? He snapped. This shit is getting really freaking annoying. He waited for her to apologize or call him a jerk, but instead he heard a faint moan. So faint, he wondered if he had heard it at all. And then complete silence. Lynn, he called out, not able to even hide the shakiness in his voice. He got no response, just his own heavy breathing. I swear to God, just stop it, he yelled, pounding his fist on the door. He waited for her to cuss him out, something he would expect from him talking to her like that. He never screamed at her before, but there was nothing, just the occasional drip from the shower head. There's no denying, at this point he was terrified, too afraid to open the damn door and face his own wife. He waited another 30 minutes or so, which feels like a lifetime when you're terrified. Finally, he decided he wasn't going to spend the night hiding in his bathroom, so he got down on his knees and peered under the door. He almost expected to see her face peeking at him, but thankfully he didn't. He could see straight down the hallway to the top of the stairs, but no Lynn. He didn't know if he should be happy or not. 
He looked for a few minutes, waiting to see her come up over the top step. But it never came. He stood up, his hand hovering over the door, and mentally preparing himself to open it. He slowly turned the lock with shaky fingers, and was about to yank it open when he heard a sound that still makes him feel nauseous when he thinks about it. A moan, louder than before, but this time he was able to tell just where it was coming from. Ben turned his head to the bathroom closet door as if in slow motion, and locked eyes with his wife, who was peeking out at him from the slight gap. Her eyes still wide as ever, and her mouth was hanging open in the most grotesque, gaping smile he'd ever seen. He didn't even scream. He was too scared for even that. Her hands were clasped to her chest, body trembling with sheer delight, as if she could barely contain her excitement. A short, raspy moan bubbled up from her throat, deep and raw, sending a shiver through his entire body. Somehow he found the ability to pull the bathroom door open, and he ran as fast as he could all the way down the steps, snagging his keys and phone from the table in the living room before running to his car. He could hear her shrill laughter behind him, but he didn't hear it getting closer. He didn't even bother shutting the door. He drove away from the house as fast as he legally could, shivering the entire time, either from fear or the cold, maybe a little bit of both. He hadn't grabbed a coat or even a pair of shoes. He was still in his boxers, and his hair was still damp. He drove straight to his brother Chris's house about 40 minutes away, ignoring any and every call or text that he got. Ben didn't check his phone until he was safely parked in his brother's driveway. Lynn had called four times and sent a flurry of texts, all wondering where he had gone and why he had left like that. He threw his phone at the dash in a rage, furious at her nonchalant attitude. His brother and his wife were surprised to see him, especially dressed in just a pair of boxers, but they told him to stay as long as he needed. His brother Chris lent him some clothes and asked what happened. He told him Lynn and him had a fight, but didn't get into the details. He didn't want them thinking he was overreacting, leaving his wife over a prank, even if it was a strange one. I mean, hadn't he encouraged her for years to lighten up instead of being so serious all the time? He wanted her to relax and loosen up, but this was definitely not what he had in mind. He tried to sleep on their sofa, but his brain wouldn't let him sleep. Every time he closed his eyes, he saw Lynn's face staring at him from inside the closet. Knowing she'd been in there with him the entire time, made his skin crawl. She'd never even left the bathroom at all. Instead, she slipped into the closet and slammed the door shut to fool him. The mere thought of going back home gave him anxiety. He tossed and turned, unable to sleep. His brother ended up giving him a sleeping pill so he was able to get a little rest. His sleep was filled with terrible dreams, all of Lynn's smiling face. He woke up just as the sun started to rise. His body sore and ached from the sofa, and he felt drained. Ben knew he'd have to call in at some point, but he didn't know what to say to her. He wouldn't be going home, unless she gave him her word she'd never do any more creepy shit. He just wanted his wife back. Her normal, serious self never looked so good to him. He was contemplating calling and telling her that when that familiar feeling came over him. He was being watched. He was staring at the ceiling, his heart in his throat. He didn't want to look away, but the longer he ignored the feeling, the worse it got. His eyes drifted away from the ceiling, almost on their own. Her face was pressed up against the window beside the couch, staring down at him, with that same gaping smile. Drool dribbled down her lips, leaving two long streaks down the glass. He didn't know how long she'd been there, but something told him she'd been there quite a while, possibly all night. He didn't bother screaming. Though he was afraid, anger trumped any fear he felt at that moment. He jumped up from the couch and pounded his palm against the glass. Lynn, are you crazy? What the hell is wrong with you? Just go home, he shouted. Now! She didn't move, and her ghastly expression never changed. If anything, her smile only grew, as if she had never been more elated. He could hear Chris and his wife moving around upstairs. As if Lynn could hear them from her place outside, her head twitched slightly in their direction, and she began to close her mouth slowly. Chris called his name from upstairs, obviously concerned. He turned to see him and his wife Rebecca hurrying down the steps. When he turned back to the window, Lynn was gone. The only sign she'd been there at all was the two streaks of drool still dripping down the glass. Ben tried explaining to Chris and Rebecca about waking up to see Lynn watching him through their window. They were skeptical, but who wouldn't be? Chris and Ben went outside to the spot in front of the window, but there were no footprints in the dirt, just a slight indent. Animal probably, Chris guessed, and Ben didn't argue. He and Rebecca assumed that Ben had dreamt the entire episode, but they didn't understand, and he was too tired to explain it to them. He called out of work that day and turned his cell phone off. He didn't want to face Lynn, just talking to her was too much for him at that point. He really started to believe something was irreversibly wrong with her. That no matter what promises she made, they'd never be the same again. The thought saddened him to his core. He cried most of the morning. By noon, 
He figured he was ready to confront her, give her one last chance to explain herself. The least he could do, after six years, he told himself. He turned his phone on and saw dozens of texts she'd sent, all from a seemingly concerned wife. Can we talk? I love you. Please call me. I'm really worried. Can you just answer? Just come home, please. And more of the same. All texts telling him she loved him and she wanted him home. How worried she was. Not a damn one addressing the crazy shit that she had pulled. Like she hadn't been acting like a character from a Stephen King book all along. Probably seems childish to those who are miles away from the situation. But if you saw the way Lynn looked at Ben and how she scampered away on all fours like some wild animal, grinning at him from inside the closet like a lunatic, then you'd understand his reaction was warranted. He ended up staying with Chris and Rebecca for another night. He didn't wake up yesterday until afternoon, and thankfully, he didn't see Lynn's face watching him through the window. I don't want to pry, because it's not my place. But is this fight something that can be mended? Rebecca asked. She'd made us both a sandwich for lunch, and Ben knew she wanted to breach the subject without seeming nosy. I don't know. I just... She's like a different person, Ben said, choosing his words carefully. He still wasn't ready for her and Chris to know the full extent of the batshit craziness he'd been dealing with. People change, Ben, but she's still the same woman you married. Maybe both of you just need to talk through your issues. Whatever's going on, I'm sure it can be fixed, she said, ever the peacemaker. I think it's beyond that now. I don't think talking would help. I just don't trust her, Ben said. The words stung in his heart. He missed and loved his wife, but how could he live with someone like that? Living in constant fear didn't sound too appealing. Lynn loves you. She has to be absolutely crushed, Rebecca said. Uh, I don't know about that, Ben said. Well, she certainly seemed like it to me. I've never seen her so upset. Very much unlike the Lynn I know, Rebecca said, shaking her head sadly. It took a full minute for her words to really sink in. And when they did, Ben felt dread worming its way through his skin. Wait, what do you mean? You saw her? You saw Lynn? He asked, his mouth suddenly dry. Rebecca nodded casually if the fact wasn't nightmare fuel. Maybe for her, it wasn't. She stopped by this morning just after Chris left for work, she said, cleaning the plates from the table. I didn't see her car, though. Maybe she took an Uber or something. Beck, what did she say? Did, did she come inside? He asked, sweat starting to break out on his forehead. He began looking around, examining corners as though a predator lurked behind them. No, she just asked if you were awake yet, and I said that you weren't. I asked if she wanted me to wake you, but she said no, just let you sleep. She said as she washed the dishes. That's all? She didn't say anything else, he asked. No, she looked awful, though, like she hadn't slept in days. I think you should call her. Ben got up from the table and thanked Rebecca for lunch. He felt a bit better knowing that she still hadn't come inside. Still, he needed to double-check the doors to make sure they were locked. Ben sat for a while trying to figure out what to do next. He didn't want to go home, but he felt that he owed it to Lynn to see if he could help her. Hadn't he sworn an oath to love her and honor her through sickness and in health? Clearly, she was very sick. If she was sick, which he truly believed she was, he had to try and get her help that she needed. But he didn't even know where to start. He didn't want to call the police, and besides, what the hell was he going to tell them? That my wife was peeking at me? That she was being creepy? As bizarre as she'd been, she still hadn't committed any crime. Not yet, anyway. The police would have probably said that he was overreacting, but this wasn't some prank. It felt wrong. Dangerous, even. Like something sinister lurked beneath her smile. He knew as her husband, he was well within his rights to have her committed. But what if she simply acted normal in their presence? She'd obviously been able to fool Rebecca into thinking she was just a concerned wife. As long as the doctors didn't find her a danger to herself or others, they'd have no choice but to release her after 72 hours. He felt lost and overwhelmed, so he did what any husband in his position would do. He didn't want to. This was a last resort. He had to call her mother. Marianne and him had never been on the best of terms. You've never fought or anything like that. She just wasn't a very warm or welcoming person and wasn't really easy to get along with. She hardly ever smiled, and when she did, only her lips would move in a thin lip smile, leaving her eyes as blank as before. She gave off this aura that felt like she was permanently on the offensive. He'd only met with her in both times were for such short visits. He got the impression she didn't approve for her daughter. Whenever we met her, Lynn always ushered us out quickly, and she didn't want him to feel uncomfortable, which he was grateful for. Being in her mother's company felt almost unbearable, like walking on glass. He was glad when they moved three states away. He was happy to avoid the woman, but he needed her help. He really didn't want to talk to her at all, 
but he had to talk to someone, and someone who knew Lynn better than he did. So he gritted his teeth and did what he had to do. Yes, she answered, already sounding irritated. Marianne, it's me, Ben. Do you have a minute to talk? He asked. He could hear her cluck her tongue in irritation. I'm in the middle of writing some checks, but if you insist, I suppose I could spare a moment. What is it that you want to discuss, Benjamin? She said coolly. It's about Lynn. She's been acting strangely, and I'm wondering if you had any idea whether there was something... I ben was quickly interrupted. It's a bit difficult to follow your rambling, Benjamin. What is it that you want from me? She asked. He could almost hear her standing there in her thin sweater and slacks, tapping her fingernails impatiently on the table. I wanted to know if you've ever noticed any odd behavior, or possibly any mental health issues, Ben asked. There was a long, uncomfortable pause that he couldn't tell because she was just thinking or something else. Finally, after a few seconds, she spoke. I'm not sure if this is one of your jokes, Benjamin, but if so, I don't find the humor in it. Now, I do have business to attend to, as I've said, so if you don't mind, she said, but he cut her off before she could get rid of him. Marianne, it's not a joke. I'm sincerely concerned about Lynn's mental health. Her behavior has been very erratic lately. I'm very worried about her, Ben said with frustration evident in his voice. If you're truly concerned, then I suggest you get the health professionals involved. I don't know what you expect from me, she snapped. He could tell she was seconds away from hanging up, and for some reason, he was desperate not to let her. He had the feeling that she knew a lot more than she was letting on. Please, if not for me, do it for Lynn, he tried. He heard a faint, shaky intake of breath, as if she were trying to hold her steely persona together but failing. Marianne, what's wrong? He started. Benjamin, I don't know what to tell you. My only advice would be to seek professional help. Do not call here again. Goodbye. He tried to call her out, but she'd hung up. He tried to wrap his head around the call and her refusal to help. Why wouldn't she want to help her own daughter? Even if she didn't like him, why wouldn't she want to help her own daughter? He couldn't understand that. He tried to replay the conversation, desperate to find something he had missed. After a while, he almost gave up, until he remembered her last words, seek professional help. She said those words with a bit of urgency. He could have just been grasping at straws, but no, he was sure her voice had changed over ever so slightly when she'd said that, as if they were very important. What had she meant? He assumed she'd been referring to professionals, but she was referring to something else or someone else, someone that didn't for some reason feel comfortable saying directly. Or maybe he was just desperate. He waited for Chris to get home, and after a very long and exhausting conversation with him and Rebecca, he convinced them that Lynn truly needed psychiatric help. He didn't tell them everything. He wasn't prepared to go into that yet, but he told them of his last encounter, how she'd hidden in the bathroom peeking at him from a closet. They were obviously shocked, but thankfully, they helped him. They, too, just wanted to help her. Still, they didn't think it was all that serious. Weird, maybe, but not dangerous. They just kept saying that Lynn had to be playing some kind of weird joke. Maybe for YouTube, Rebecca offered, only half-heartedly. Chris didn't think we should involve the police just yet. He offered to go with Ben, and he readily accepted. He reasoned that calmly talking to her, trying to coax her into going willingly, was the best recourse. Ben agreed to do it this way. At least he wouldn't be going into that house alone. They drove over there in the morning, just after breakfast. There was no way he was going at night. When he pulled into the driveway, his stomach began to do somersaults. Her car wasn't there, but he still didn't let his guard down. The front door was ajar. For a split second, he thought he'd seen her eyes staring through the gap. He was shaking and starting to sweat. Chris, however, was fine. He waited for Ben to open the door, his hands in his pockets, like he was going on a freaking stroll through the park. Ben envied his ignorance. He pushed the door open and was immediately hit with the stench of rot. Chris smelled it too and he walked into the house behind him with his nose scrunched up. What do you guys use to clean the floors around here? Shit, Chris mumbled. Shut up, Ben said, his eyes darting around for any signs of Lynn. The house was deadly quiet and dark despite being 10 in the morning. All the curtains were closed up tight, refusing to allow any sunlight inside. If he hadn't left it just two days prior, he'd have thought the house to be abandoned. He moved through each room, carefully checking any place that she might hide, occasionally calling her name. Why the F are you looking under the couch? Chris asked eventually. Aren't we looking for your wife? He was looking at Ben like he was a moron. Let's just go upstairs, he whispered. He shook his head, but followed me up the stairs to check the bathroom and spare bedroom. On the way up, my shoes crunched over pieces of glass that looked to be littered over a few of the steps. He noticed that one of Lynn and his wedding portraits that hung on the wall all along the staircase had been smashed. The frame hung crookedly all the glass removed. Ben stared at the picture, a lump forming in his throat. 
We had taken the photo just after leaving the church, after saying our vows. She looked so beautiful in her white gown. He looked at Lynn's beautiful face. He never dreamed her face would ever be a source of terror for him. They climbed the rest of the steps and checked the spare bedroom, but it looked completely untouched. He was hesitant to go in the bathroom, his fear from that night coming back to him all at once. Chris noticed and offered to go in by himself, but Ben couldn't let him do that. So they walked in together, checked in the closet and the shower. The bathroom looked as if it hadn't been touched since the night that Ben left. I don't think she's here, Ben. Why don't you pack some clothes and we'll try and come back tomorrow or something, Chris said. Ben nodded and went to his bedroom, and he shoved some clothes into a duffel bag. When he checked inside his closet, he came across the source of the smell and gagged. Chris took one look and lost all color in his face. He had to go stand by the stairs to get away from the sight and the smell. Ben gazed down in shock at what lay inside the bedroom closet. Soaking into the rug were at least a dozen eyeballs, all carefully laid out in pairs. Some were as large as a quarter, while others were as tiny as marbles. He stared down at the eyes she collected from small animals, and he had wondered how she'd gotten them, and shuddered at the thought. Man, he thought he had it bad with Becca's shoe addiction. But F me, your wife's in here collecting eyeballs, Chris said, gagging. Ben, I think we should go, he called from the hall. I'm getting nauseous. All right. He grabbed his duffel bag and shut the closet door on his new nightmare. He stepped out into the hall and took a deep breath of air. He could taste the rot on his tongue, and he couldn't help but gag. Who the hell lines up eyeballs in their closet like that, Chris mumbled. I tried to tell you she needed help, Ben said. She doesn't need help, Ben. She needs a freaking exorcist, he said. You coming or what? She doesn't need help, Ben. She needs a freaking exorcist, he said. You coming or what? I can't stand this smell any. His words died in his throat, and his eyes grew wide with fear. Ben didn't even need to ask why. He could feel it. Someone was watching him and he didn't think it was the eyes in the closet. He turned around, his eyes slowly scanning the bedroom. Christ, he whispered as he finally saw what they had missed. Under the bed, curled on her side, watching them with the excitement of a kid on Christmas morning, was his wife. She held her hands together just under her chin, and they were shaking eagerly. Now that she knew she'd been found, he could hear quiet noises that she was making, a sort of hiccuping sound in her throat, as if the excitement was just too much for her to bear. It was unnerving to say the least. Wide eyes and that same huge smile. Everything in him told him to run, but he forced it away. This was his wife. No matter how twisted, she was still the woman he married. He had to try and help her. Lynn, he said softly. She didn't respond, but her head bobbed back and forth in two quick little movements as if she were nodding. Baby, I just want to help, okay? Can you, can you let me do that? He asked. He had taken a single step forward, approaching her like some kind of dangerous animal. I love you, Lynn, he said softly, taking another step closer. She let a tiny moan escape her wide mouth. He had to resist the urge to run, her shoulders starting to quiver, and her eyes grew as large as saucers. Ben then crouched down so he could see her better, and immediately he saw the blood. Her hands were covered in it. They trembled more the closer he got, as if she was barely able to contain herself. Lynn, are you hurt? You're bleeding, he said. She bobbed her head again, her bloody fingers moving up and down as if playing an invisible piano. They occasionally grazed her chin, leaving smears of blood on her skin. He wanted to recoil in disgust. The smell that was coming off of her was revolting. He could feel the vomit trying to climb up his throat. Her lips were dry and stretched thin, blood seeping between the cracks. He knew she wouldn't come out on her own, but he didn't want to leave her in the state she was in. He scooted closer and reached out to her. The excited hiccuping sounds got louder and her hand shook, fingers flexing. It was then that he could see the blood oozing from in between her fingers. Oh my God, Lynn, you're bleeding, he said. Instinctively, he reached out to take her hand, but before he could even touch her, her hand sprang out towards him. A sharp pain shot through his arm and he fell back on his ass. His arm burned, and he could see the blood dripping down on the carpet. He looked back at her in shock and saw her grinning madly, her fingers clutching a large shard of glass. You all right in there, Chris asked? Ben turned his head slightly and nodded to him, cradling his arm to his chest. When he turned back to face Lynn, he saw that her focus had shifted. She wasn't looking at him anymore, and she wasn't smiling anymore either. She was staring past him, her eyes glaring at Chris the way a hungry lion might stare at an antelope. Her mouth was still hanging open, but it was twisted into a snarl. Ben got to his feet and began walking backwards down the hall, afraid to take his eyes off her. Are you bleeding? Chris asked. 
The moment the words left his mouth, Lynn started fast scooting out from under the bed, the glass shard still in her fist. Chris, run, go! Ben yelled. He must have been too afraid to move because a second later he felt his back bump into him. He was still standing at the top of the stairs, staring at the horror that was Ben's wife. Lynn had crawled completely out from under the bed and stood in the bedroom doorway. Her face twisted in a rage. Her whole body was visibly tense. Blood ran down her fingers and onto the floor. Jesus, Lynn, Chris said. You, uh, played in hide and seek? Ben grabbed him and pushed him down the steps. Move your ass, Chris, he said as quietly but firmly as he could. Lynn bobbed her head in a fast, sharp motion and began to grin, stretching her mouth open wider and wider so that her chin seemed to touch her chest. Ben heard Chris mutter a prayer and then he was running down the stairs. He stood at the top of the steps, stuck between the love for a woman who clearly needed some serious help and self-preservation. I only want to help, Ben said, choking back tears. Her eyes focused on him once again as she slowly lifted the glass, holding it out in front of her. And then she started sprinting towards him, grinning with utter excitement. Thankfully, Ben's body took over and he flew down the stairs, skipping two or three steps at a time. He made it to the front door before he felt her leap onto his back, wrapping her arms around his neck, her open mouth next to his ears so that he could hear those terrible hiccuping sounds up close. He shook her off of him, knocking her to the floor, felt a searing pain in his back as she went, but he tore open the front door and bolted to his car. Chris was standing in the front yard, talking on the phone with the police. He didn't say a word. He just ran to Ben's car and jumped in. Chris took the hint and followed me, still on the line with 911. He watched the rearview mirror, sure he'd see her there running after them. But he never did. He went straight to the ER, 11 stitches in his arm and 3 on his back. The police asked a lot of questions and went back to the house to do a search, but of course, Lynn wasn't there. They advised me to stay with a friend or relative for a while and to file a restraining order as soon as he could. None of those things were matter. Somehow, Ben just knew. Ben dropped Chris off at home and went to a motel an hour away. He wanted to put as much distance between him and Lynn as he could. This is where he'd been for the last four hours. He thought maybe the police would find her. Maybe they'd get her the help she desperately needs. But now, he doesn't think so. Because 40 minutes ago, he got a text from an unknown number. Just three words. I found you. And a picture attached. The picture was dark and grainy, but he instantly knew what it was. There was no mistaking his wife's eye. He started typing this out immediately after. He doesn't know what to do. He's alone and scared, and he couldn't help, but that he was feeling like he was being watched. I hope y'all enjoyed that crazy story. I know it was a long one, but it was intriguing nonetheless. Very, very tense, very crazy. I had talked to the author and she said she was probably going to do a part two eventually, but at this point, who knows what the outcome is, right? You can only imagine. And hopefully, maybe someday soon, she will do a part two. Thank you guys for watching. Like I said, I know that was a long video. I really didn't intend on it being that long, but it just turned out that way. It was a very long story, but a very good one nevertheless. Let me know what you think in the comments. Again, thanks for tuning in. I'm actually... Uh, feeling a lot better. I had a long bout where I wasn't feeling very well, um, strep throat and a very bad cough. I'm starting to feel a lot better, still a little under the weather, but I'm trying to get on and produce some more videos for you guys, keep you guys rolling. So I hope you enjoyed it. Stay in the love, stay in the light, be kind to others, stay tuned. I am out.